and welcome back to chapter 15 in Healthcare Law and Ethics. We're going to look briefly at section 3 today. It starts on page 354. Mostly talks about genetic information on those first three pages and then we're going to get into adoption. Um, for genetic information, really just want you to read through that. Um, it starts talking about Gina. Gina is the, um, oh, where is it at? Uh, it's the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, and you can see that over on the bottom of 354. But it talks about genetic non-discrimination and in health insurance and states that health plans may not use genetic information to make eligibility, coverage, underwriting, or premium setting decisions. And so it kind of gets, that's Title I, and then in Title II, it talks about how that's the responsibility of the EEOC the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, um, and it prohibits the use of genetic information in making employment decisions, restricts employers and other entities covered by Title II um, from requesting, requiring, or purchasing genetic information, and strictly limits the disclosure of genetic information. So it's very interesting how genetic information plays a role in this. So again, you can read through that. We're going to move on over to 356, adoption information. Now, so we all know adoption is a legal status in which parental rights and responsibilities of one set of parents are legally terminated. Okay, so the birth parents, the biological parents. Termination of rights, and then there is a new parental established through law. So you have a new set of parents. They are your legal parents, okay? Parties to an adoption are, of course, the adopted individual. That's our adoptee. The biological parents are your natural or birth parents. And then the adoptive parents, okay? Our adoption records include public and non-public documents, such as the original sealed birth certificate, court documents related to the adoption process, and records of the adoption agency and or attorneys involved with the adoption. Most state laws deem these records to be confidential and allow their release only with a court order. Now, while health records may not be included in the definition of adoption records, they are nonetheless crucial because there's identifying information. So, if I go to the hospital as an adoptee, I was adopted, if I was adopted, and I ask for medical records, from my birth record, it may have information in it that will lead me back to my birth parents. So adoption presents a unique challenge to health information professionals, especially when it comes down to protecting health information. Now, a lot of adoptions are open today, and so the parties involved actually know their each other's identities. Maybe in an open adoption, you see your adoptive, your, your birth parents once a month, something like that. You know who they are. But a long time ago, it was a hush-hush, don't even ask who the adoptive parents are. You're not going to know. We're not going to tell you. And so th times have kind of changed, and so adoption process and the records have changed as well. Now, in 357, it gets into the release of information for an adopted person. Now, it says, a right of access exists for an adoptee's own health records, including their birth record, but with all of the information that identifies the biological parents redacted. That means it's been removed. Now, until the adoptee reaches the age of majority, the right of access will belong to the adoptive parents. So, if you adopt a brand new baby, then, of course, they're not going to be asking for their medical records because they can't talk. So, that right of access belongs to the adoptive parents, which is their personal representative. Now, once the adoptee reaches the age of majority, the rights of access belongs to the adult adoptee. Policies for the collection and maintenance of adoption information vary from state to state. However, all states have provisions and statutes that allow access to non-identifying information by an adoptive parent or guardian of an adoptee who is still a minor and then to the adoptee once they reach the age of majority. Some states provide that information regarding the adoptee's physical and mental health be given to the adoptive parents at the time of the adoption. Um, if you want to continue on over into, um, well, actually that little bottom paragraph, it says, unless mandated by court order. 
Health records are not the usual mechanisms for parties to an adoption to identify and locate one another. However, requests of this nature may occur, which requires that the health care provider have a process in place for preserving the privacies of both parties concerned. So a lot of times people will go in and try to get their birth records to figure out who their birth parents are. Um, it happens a lot, surprisingly. They'll come in and they'll say, well, I've lost my driver's license. I need a copy of my birth certificate. And they expect us to give them a copy of our working birth certificate that we have that has their biological parents' names on them. So, you know, people will get tricky with what they come in and they ask for. All right, so we're going to skip on Check Your Understanding on page 358. We're going to skip the first two about Gina, and we're going to go into 3, 4, and 5 that are all about adoption. Um, some states provide that physical and mental health of a minor adoptee can be given to their parents at uh, given to the adoptive parents at the time of the adoption. And we actually just read that sentence um, over on <clears throat> uh, 357. Some state statutes provide that information regarding the adoptee's physical and mental health be given to the adoptive parents at the time of adoption. So that is true. Number four, an adoptee's birth record is restricted to protect the biological parents unless both parties have agreed to have their identities disclosed in a mutual consent registry. Um, and I believe that is going to be, uh, that should be true, I believe. And then number five, only the adult adoptee can decide if he or she may access health information of his or her biological parents for health risk purposes. Now, uh, I don't think we read that. Let's see. At the top of 358, it talks about genetic information. So that comes into play sometimes when you're, you've been adopted and you don't know your health history. You don't know your parents' health history. But it says, courts in a variety of states have established different thresholds as to what meets a good cause requirement that would justify access to information, including health information, about one's biological parents or siblings. A court will further specify whether the identifying information must be removed if access is granted. Um, so at the top, it was talking about access to health information of an adoptee's biological parents or siblings can prove critical in identifying risk factors and providing background information to assist with diagnosis and treating the adopted child. So, um, not actually sure what the answer is trying to be on that one. Let's take a look and see what the answer key says. Um, It does say on our slide, after age of majority, that the right belongs solely to the adoptee of what medical records they want to have um, seen. So let's check out what the answer key is trying to tell us for this one. Let's see, 15.3. Okay, yes, that is um, false. Okay, so three we said was true. Some states do provide that physical and mental health can be given at the time of the adoption. And I said number four was true. The adoptee's birth record is restricted unless, of course, they have both agreed that their identities be closed. And then the last one, only the adult adoptee can decide if he or she may access health information of his or her biological parents for health risk purposes. And that is false. All right, so again, we'll pick up with um, section four. There's a little bit we're going to read. We're going to talk about deceased patients. We're going to talk about disclosure of information to a medical examiner or a coroner. We're going to skip over and we're going to talk a little bit about um, payment requests. And we're going to talk about medical emergencies and public figures. And then that's going to finish up section four. So we will get into that in our next lecture. Happy reading and happy studying.